Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at the end of behavior of rational functions. And to determine the end of behavior, we simply divide. A rational function just has a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So I'm just simply going to divide. And whatever my quotient is, minus the remainder, will be, will tell me a little bit about what's happening on my end behavior. It'll help me to find a horizontal in this video or a slant in the next video asymptote. So for instance, here I have my um, divisor divided by my dividend and I'm just going to divide x goes into x one time. So if I were to multiply one times this, I would end up with Notice when I subtract those, that becomes zero. Now I have a remainder here, but we're not gonna worry about the remainder. That plus seven over x minus five, that remainder, we're not gonna worry about. What this tells me is this particular rational function is going to approach y equals one. In other words, there's going to be a horizontal asymptote where y equals one. So if I look at a graph of that, a coordinate plane, where y equals one, my graph is gonna get closer and closer to that on the ends, at the end behavior. It doesn't really tell me what's happening in the middle, it just talks to me about what's happening on the end. Let's do the same thing here. I'm just simply dividing again. I take my numerator and I divide it by that denominator. And again, I'm only looking for the whole number. I'm not worried about the remainder. So how many times does 3x squared go into 6x squared? And maybe if you're worried about this, you know there are extra terms there. It's a 0x plus a 0. Well, this 3x squared goes into that 6x squared two times. Two times that would give me 6x squared plus 22x plus 8. Again, notice when I subtract, I end up with zero there. I will end up with a remainder, but again, I'm not worried about that. I'm only worried about this part. And that tells me that there is going to be a horizontal asymptote where y equals 2. Notice in both of those cases, when I divided, the, the degree of my a numerator was the same as the degree of the denominator. Same thing was true here. When the degree of your numerator is the same as the degree of your denominator, you really are just simply dividing the quotients. I mean the coefficients. This one divided by that one gives me one. This six divided by this three gives me two. So if you were to do more of these, you would see that when the degree of the numerator, I'm just going to call it my Don, when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of your denominator, so when the degree on top is equal to the degree on bottom, we simply divide the leading coefficients the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. And that gives you your horizontal asymptote. Let's look at this example. Here, my degree on top is not the same as the degree on bottom. And in this example, my degree on top is not the same as my degree on bottom. So I can't just go back and say the leading coefficient um, of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. So let's see what happens in this case. I am again simply dividing. That's all this means is that we take our top and divide by the bottom. And it turns out that that will talk to us about what's happening on our end behavior. So here, when I divide x times what would give me that two? Well, there's not one. It turns out that, you know, maybe you can look at it this way where we write it as 0x plus 2. Again, where you're filling in. So x times what gives me 0x? Well, it would be 0. 
with that um, remainder of two. So I, I'm only looking at the whole number here to begin with. I'm not worried about the um, remainder. So my horizontal asymptote there is where y equals zero. It's gonna get closer and closer to where y equals zero on the ends. I'm gonna do the same thing here where I put my de numerator divided by my denominator. And again, if we look at this, it turns out that my denominator is larger than my numerator with that x squared on bottom it's going to be larger or you can look at it this way fill in your extra um, values there's no x squared so it's 0 times x squared plus 6x plus 0 so I'm asking myself 3 times what would give me that 0 and it would be 0 so my quotient there is 0 without the remainder and that's what I'm worried about to find my horizontal asymptote. So again, my horizontal asymptote is zero. So it turns out that when the degree on top is one smaller than the, or is smaller, when the degree on top is smaller than the one on bottom, then we end up with a horizontal asymptote or y equals zero. So when the degree of your numerator is less than the degree of your denominator. When the bottom is bigger than the top, this is not going to go in there a nice um, whole number of time. It's going to go in there zero times. So your horizontal asymptote will always equal zero. In our next video, we'll look at slant asymptotes. We will simply do the same thing where we divide, but we'll see when we have a slant asymptote. Math's made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.